Hello YouTube, we've had some time apart recently, have it? It's cold. It's colder than it was in my house. Jumper's going on. Um, I brought it down. I was that organised at least. How are you doing? Whew. We've had some time apart. I hope you don't mind that. I overdid it in December. This t-shirt and this neckline, it's not a good combo. Um, yeah, I needed just a bit of time, I think to get my head back round to YouTubing again, getting back in that routine because I, I fell off it, I'll be completely honest and sometimes that's okay so uh, changes that have occurred since we last spoke uh, I have an oven I have an oven, I can fit 15 trays of yarn in at once which is very exciting so today I am going to be dyeing yarn, the oven is on, it's heating up it's currently heating up and um, yeah, I've still been making content. Uh, I've still been posting for the Biscuit Brew Crew over on Patreon. So I've not completely got out the flow of making content. I've just got out the flow of making content twice a week. So I'm hoping that you uh, welcome me back with open arms and you don't, you don't hold this against me too much because I do feel horribly about it. What I'm currently prepping for is two things, are two things, I'm currently prepping for two things. Firstly, East Anglia Yarn Festival, that is from, that is the 9th and 10th of March. So it's three weeks today, because today is Friday, I'm, I will be travelling down in three weeks uh, to set up and such. So that's it, very exciting. Secondly, I am going to be launching a new collection, this is with yarn inspired by Stardew Valley. Woo! I currently have five colorways decided. One of them didn't come out quite right because I'm learning how to dye in an oven and the turquoise dye got in the pan and burnt and then dyed some of the yarn yellow. The yarn itself isn't burnt. The yellow doesn't look bad. It just doesn't fit with the theme of Jojo Mart. So I'm going to be redying. The fluff is all right, surprisingly. So I'm going to be redying up those on the other bases today and then three other colours just from my book from my book of recipes um, for East Anglia Yarn Festival because I need to dye some yarn. I also will either bead weave whilst the yarn is cooking or I'm going to be twisting and labelling yarn, not quite sure as yet. We shall see. But yeah. It's an exciting time. I was going to dye Bardic Inspiration today. Did I write down the new recipe? Let's find out. Ooh, what was that? Not sure. Bardic Inspiration. Yes, I did write that down. First and foremost, I'm filming this voice over the next day and it's lunch time, but I want to get this video saving before I go and eat lunch. So if you hear my tummy rumble, it's because I'm hungry. I was watching a beading tutorial the other day and the person's tummy gurgled throughout and they didn't acknowledge it, so I'm acknowledging it from the off, just in case you're concerned. I'm fine, I'm just peckish. Luckily, there's a freshly baked loaf of bread in my bread bin. Freshly baked yesterday, so I guess it's not freshly baked. Um, but I just wanted, to, so there's been a lot of discussion in the Indie Dye community about the community aspect of it itself. I'm not going to say that everyone has to participate in the community aspect of it itself. I know um, there was a discussion because someone was blocking a lot of indie dyers because they didn't want to uh, see any other indie dyers posts, which I can't fully understand as a concept. I don't look at other indie dyers posts to copy their yarn. I think that I don't think a lot of people do. I'm sure a minority of people do. I look at other indie dyers posts to get inspired. I love watching dyeing videos, dyeing reels, learning new techniques. When I first got this oven, I was looking up other dyers that dye in the oven. It's very different to dyeing on a hob, is what I have come to realize. The first first difference being this at, at, go back to my previous point before I move on to the next one. Uh, yes. I like sharing techniques and how I do things. I'm not sharing specific colours. If you've worked out the colour, congratulations. I use a whole host of different dyes. Sometimes the pots that I'm using do not correlate the dye that I'm using. 
and I think that's absolutely fine uh, but if you want to copy a colour sure if you sell thousands of skeins I will not be happy about it but you know whatever I'm I don't know I just think there's a lot of I love sharing my dyeing techniques because it's a great way to learn dyeing in an oven is very very different so I like sharing the different ways that I have dyed yarn uh, throughout my dyeing things. I started out dyeing in an oven, two trays at a time in my kitchen oven. Um, and that is how I dyed for ages until I got this dye shed built. I was full time dyeing with two pounds at a time. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I made enough money to do that, but you know, here we are. So dyeing in the oven is different, very different. Um, obviously when you are dyeing on a hob, the yarn gets hot because you're heating it from underneath as you're adding colour and all of that. So speckles are much easier because the um, speckle strikes straight away and it doesn't kind of go bleh like they do when you're dyeing this technique because all of this water is cold. I don't have a hot tap down the dye shed. I could get an urn or a kettle or whatever, but I don't feel the need to get one for the most part. Um, I feel I'm finding discovering what's working and there's just the pans that I'm using are shallower so the yarn can't move around as much. The pans have to be shallower so I can fit them all in the cu in the oven, not in the cupboard. These are 65 millimeter um, one one. I don't know what what that means. Full size, I guess. Gastronorm trays. I use the Vogue ones. Uh, they are induction. You can use them for induction. Pro tip. Um, but. For when I was dying on induction, I was using the 100 millimeter ones instead of 65 mil. So that is much deeper. And I think I also had some 150 mil, just two of those, I think. I didn't use them as often. Um, but it's just learning about different techniques. So for the first color and this color, first being Bardic Inspiration, this one being Prestidigitation, blah, 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 I'm sort of putting the dye on and squishing it in. The last color I dyed is Jojo Mart. And that I put the dye in the bottom and then twisted the yarn in so it wasn't completely saturated and then did a few stripes of a navy blue colour and then popped that in the oven. Um, at this point I obviously haven't added citric acid. You can see when I add citric acid I think to all of the colours and that's just so it doesn't absorb it too quickly. I will say that I did a different technique where I kind of rotated the yarn in the dye and I think that works better for a more... Um, consistent colour but I do like the pour and squish because you get light bits you get dark bits uh, it makes it a bit more interesting when you're speckling and all of that but it is it's an adjustment for sure I got into the habit when I was dying on hobs of making colourways that had lots of different steps in it which you will see with the next colourway I'm re-dyeing up one of the uh, Nish Crow Yarn Club colourways from last year. This is Are You Offering to Help? inspired by Vax. And you will notice that there's a lot more steps in this colourway than in the last few colourways. And while that's good and I do enjoy doing colourways like that, it's not always the most practical and you don't always get necessarily better results. Um, but they're still fun to do sometimes. It was just if you have a whole collection of very time-consuming colourways, uh, it takes you a really long time to do every colour. <laughs> so, just something to bear in mind. Uh, obviously, this colour come. I haven't washed this colourway out yet. I'm going to do it this afternoon. Um, but this colour is going to come out a little bit differently to how it originally did because... It's just not going to have as much water in the pan. It's not the speckles aren't going to instantly strike because I do speckle before I put it in the oven, so they might be a little more wishy-washy than on the original one. Because obviously, the more not obviously, it's not obvious at all. The more water you have in the pan, the more the yarn moves, and when the speckles, if the speckles hit like a pool of water, they kind of go because they die and they're designed to be mixed with water. So if you're speckling. And there's lots of water in the pan, the speckles aren't necessarily going to stay where they're going to be, and then you pick up the pan to move it to the oven, that is creating movement, that is meaning that the dye itself is moving, whereas when it's static on a hob, you don't have that problem. But the perk of the oven is, I physically dyed for three hours today, yesterday, and 
uh, that's not including the time that I've just left the oven on, obviously. And I got 60 skeins of yarn dyed, which is incredible. And that's so I think I did two hours for the first round, one hour for the second round, and that's I could not do that on a hob at all. So that is the oven loaded up with yarn. It's currently 12 o'clock. I came in at 10 to 12. I've literally just been sat chatting to people on Instagram, which isn't a waste of my time because that is my socializing, but is a bit of a waste of my time. Um, but I am going to, am I hungry? Not particularly. I had a bit of a later breakfast. So I'm going to record a demonstration how long a film is, how much knitting I got done during said film. I was going to go and put makeup on for it. Um, but truth be told, too many people are not confident enough in themselves without makeup on. And I honestly don't care if you see me in makeup or not in makeup. I am going to put a scarf on because I can't stop looking at this. This is a terrible situation. But I went to see Argyle with my sister, her husband, my husband. We all went together. It was a lovely time. Um, terrible film. Terrible film. But... It was nice to hang out as a quad. But yeah, this is how much I knit of my sock. Spoilers. Um, although I think I'm probably going to be posting the reel today, so is it a spoiler? But yeah, I'm just going to go get a scarf and then get adjusted. Oh, got hiccups. Oh, I have a scarf. Perfect. Well then, I don't even need to go anywhere. <sighs> Welcome to my house where there's just an abundance of scarves everywhere. This is the All About That Brioche Shawl in... Uh, this top colour is by... Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn. What's it called? Come Alive? Potentially Come Alive. Potentially Come Alive. I need to get rid of these hiccups before I film. And then this colorway is from Yarn Cafe Creations in the Gothic color. And they gave them to me last EAYF. Oh, no, not EAYF. EYF. Oh. Edinburgh Yarn Festival. How sad. I really, I was reminiscing the other day about how much I miss Edinburgh Yarn Festival and all the Americans coming over. Not all of the Americans, obviously. Um, all of the various, or some American podcasters, let's say it like that, coming over and just getting to meet them and hang out with them and have an amazing time. A bunch of people are going to flock this year, which is in the US. Um, I can't think off the top of my head whereabouts it is in the US, but a bunch of European and British uh, dyers will be going over there. And I'm jealous because it's not in the budget this year. So uh, maybe in the future, not to vend, just to attend. But yeah, no no other yarn shows in my future other than East Anglia Yarn Festival this year. Anyway, right, now that's covered up that dodgy neckline, I'm going to record this before my phone battery decides to give up the ghost because I don't have heat. Also, something else I'm going to look into, I was thinking this while I was dying yarn today, is using the dyeing footage I take I take for vlogs and making it content for social media. YouTube is a social media. You, um, turning it to short form content vertical. I don't quite know how to do that though. So we, uh, I'll have to do some Googling because there's no point filming it twice when I'm already filming it, you know? So I've just recorded it. It generally doesn't take me that, that long to record it. Sometimes it takes me a few attempts because by the time I'm working out what I'm saying, um, then, th you know, it's fine. Sometimes it just takes me a couple of attempts because I forget info and all of that fun stuff. But uh, the last one took me far longer than this one because I was out the loop of doing it. But now I'm kind of getting back into the loop of doing it. I don't edit it in either TikTok or Instagram because I don't enjoy their editing programs. I edit it in a program called Ucut, which I think is Android specific. Um, and it's just easier for me to use, so. That's what I'm going to do now. Oh look, it's me. Uh, edit this and then post it and probably get my beading mat out. Because I have a lot of stitch markers to make before East Anglia Young Festival. Oh my god. I had some lunch and uh, I was going to do some bead weaving but I actually have a touch of a headache at the moment which is not ideal. So I've taken a couple of paracetamol. I'm going to sit and knit for a bit because concentrating on bead weaving can worsen a headache. Who'd have thought? Um, so I am going to knit one chart repeat because <laughs> it takes me an hour to do. I am on still knitting. <laughs> Nightshade Society sweater. I've put it on, waist yarn on the bottom so I can try it on. 
I finished Juan sleeve. I don't know how I feel about the bind off I did, but cast off, apologies, Americanisms. Uh, but that's fine. I finished one sleeve. I've picked up sleeve numero dos and I'm about to start. Well, I have started. I think I did, did a chart repeat this morning. Where did I pick up a sleeve? So I knit half a chart yesterday. I knit half a chart yesterday and then I've knit a full chart this morning and I'm about to knit another chart. I really want to get this finished for East Anglia Yarn Festival. But we shall see if I do because um, it's, like I said, it's three weeks away and I've got stitch marks to make. I'm doing a test knit for someone which I've not even started. Um, well, that's fine. I have time. And the test knit is due the same weekend as East Anglia Yarn Festival. So I'd better get a rig along with that. But I've got time. I don't think it will take me too, too long to knit, which is good. Um, I found all the yarn out that I want to use for it, which will be nice. And yeah. I just want to get a bit of bit of a dent in with this. I've almost finished one of the skeins of Surrey. Well, it will be the second skein of Surrey, so I might have to twist up, cake up the next skein. And then we'll see where we're at. But yeah, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna knit this for a bit. I'm gonna let the pain relief kick in. And then by that point, the first round of dye should have exhausted. And then I can go down and do speckles and round number two. I might try and even do it quicker than an hour, we'll see. Um, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll knit till half past two. Um, it's currently 10 to two. So it's been two hours that that yarn's been sat in there. So it should almost be done, if not already be done. Luckily the headache passed quite quickly. Kimchi saw the opportunity of me sitting and still for a minute and came and sat on my lap for cuddles because if you don't know I have two cats one of them is black one of them is black and white this one is kimchi the other is miso they're very cuddly they love to sit on laps so knitting over the top of her didn't attack the yarn at all absolutely fine L wonderful okay so what I've done at this point is I've taken the yarn out of the oven I've drained off most of the water not all of the water you want a bit of water in there to create steam but you don't want too much so the speckles move around too much it's odd I know and then I added a bit more citric acid did I need it? Not entirely sure. I'm using a lot of landscape dyes and their dye is mixed with citric acid anyway. So the speckles should be crisper. Should be. Uh, but I, that, I mean, I am quite enjoying speckling with landscape yarns. I can't really use them to like, as the base color of dye that much because they require so, you require so much in water to get a decent color and they're really expensive. These are 10 pounds a pot at least. I think they might have gone up to 11 now. Um, that's really expensive. That's, that's really expensive, especially because it's done by weight and then the citric acid weighs more than the dye. So you actually get less than you do in a pot of Dharma dye. I think I could be wrong in that regard, but yeah, uh, this is Jacquard, um, Aztec gold. It's the only Jacquard dye that I have. And I bought a massive tub of it because I use so much Aztec gold. This isn't a landscapes dye, but it's still quite crispy with the speckles. And what I do is, I do it with some neons in prestidigitation as well. I was going to talk about it then, but we'll talk about it now. That's absolutely fine. I, uh, I'm i in a Discord with a bunch of other indie dyes. It's a lovely time. Um, great community feel. We go back to the community aspect of everything in life. And what I do is I mix two parts citric acid to one part dye. So if I do 20 scoops of citric acid I do 10 scoops of dye that's the easiest way I think for me to explain it so I do half the amount of dyes I do citric acid if I explain it three ways one of them will hopefully make sense to you <laughs> and then I put it in like an empty dye pot of which I have many and I shake it up so it's nice and intermingled and then I speckle that on and it just means that the speckles are just a bit crispier a bit crispier which is nice and um, yeah so I do that with a lot of my Dharma dyes, do that with my Color Craft dyes. This is uh, Purple Pop, which is renowned to go bleh and go everywhere. It's how I ruined so many skeins of Metagaming Pigeon when I was dyeing it because the formula changed between the two pots I was using and one of them set, one of them didn't. Nightmare scenario. 
as in one of the pots of dye would set and one of the pots of dye wouldn't. Um, this is fluorescent fuchsia. Once again in a landscape, I need to take a, like a permanent marker or a sharpie or something down the dye shed and actually write on the tub what it is. At the moment I'm relying on memory. That is risky. It's very risky. I need to take a, a pen and actually write that it's not what it says it is because otherwise I'm going to pick it up thinking it's Gala, is that what it's called? Um, and it's actually fluorescent pink and like, oh my goodness, that is not what I wanted. But I haven't dyed Prestidigitation in a really long time. For this colour and for the last colour, I took out most of the water, not all of the water, and then I, it like uh, when like you saw me do in Jojo Mart first round, I twisted the yarn in. So this isn't just like all of the back of the yarn. Um, it's hopefully so the speckles are a bit more evenly distributed through the skein. I'm kind of new to using this particular technique um, to get speckles evenly dispersed. So hopefully it works. Fingers crossed. And yeah. And then I got fluorescent, fluorescent pink is um, a pain in the foot, as the French would say, to die with because it goes everywhere so I did get some fluorescent pink on the pan and some on the yarn and I'm hoping it's not super if it's super noticeable it will go in the bargain box or it will be sold as a second but if it's not super noticeable or if I've managed to hide it because it's quite a dark colour keep your fingers crossed for me then I can sell it and then it's absolutely fine but I do event I do wipe it off the edge of the pan um as much as I can but yeah fluorescent pink and turquoise are a pain in the bum because they go everywhere and they even if you I think even if you haven't used turquoise you will end up with turquoise somewhere it's why I should actually wash my zip ties better than I than just as I'm rinsing the yarn because sometimes the color goes from the zip ties onto the yarn and it's a disaster but my camera battery of me recording not right now but of me recording me dyeing this colorway is going to die shortly um so you will not see me dye up the whole colorway because even though it was a brand new freshly charged battery i did a whole lot of filming today and uh the battery dies any minute now good evening folks it is now 10 to 7. mario went to bed about 20 minutes ago because he's got to be up like half 11 tonight which is so uh, so late early i don't know Sometimes I stay up, um, sometimes I don't, so we'll see. I've gone down the shed, my camera battery died, so that is why we had radio silence for a few hours. My camera battery died because I've done a lot of um, long length filming today of dying things, which drains the battery, unsurprisingly. Um, so that's going to be fun to edit down. <laughs> so I've just gone down and switched the oven off. Um, it was on for about two and a half hours. So actually have enough, leave the door shut. I've got dye on my hand. So that should cool down um, nicely. And then tomorrow morning, I will go and rinse it all and get it drying and get some yarn into soak ready for me to dye on Sunday. Um, I think maybe Advent yarn because I'm dyeing Advents a bit earlier this year. Uh, I'm dying them before I've even sold them, which is quite scary to do. But I put a poll up on Instagram asking people if they are interested in having an advent, and over 90 people said they were. So I'm optimistic. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to die up 140, which I know sounds like a big difference from 90, but not everyone would have seen the Instagram stories. And also, if I'm dying up for 140, I'm only selling 125. Please remind me of this in the summer when I'm packing them up and hating my life. <laughs> but yes, this year's Advent is inspired by Muppet's Christmas Carol. I'm really excited about it. I'm taking a step away from Dungeons and Dragons specific yarn and heading to uh, Muppet's Christmas Carol, which is my favourite Christmas film. And I'm so excited for it. Um, yeah, so I might start dyeing them up on Sunday. We shall see. I can fit two colours in the oven at once, so that should be quite good. Fingers crossed. That'll be the technique I use. Anyway, um, it's been good. It's good. I'm glad I'm back. Glad I'm back to filming. Glad I'm back to um, uploading to YouTube again. 
I, Mario and I played, we wanted to play Baldur's Gate 3, but it was updating. And was a huge update, so we couldn't, we played Plates Up instead, which is kind of like Overcooked. Oh, that's a kimchi, I don't know if you heard that. And, um, hey bud! Yeah, quite, quite enjoyed that, so we played that for a bit, and then we're watching Scott Pilgrim, the cartoon, uh, which is really, really good. It's kind of a different spin on the story, so um, that is what we're watching. We're watching, we need to watch this week's episode of Delicious in Dungeon, which is being posted on, they're posted on Netflix on a Thursday, so it should already be there. Um, so watch that tomorrow. And yeah, Mario's just going to be really tired tomorrow because he's got a really early market. And then he's got another market on Sunday. And then on Sunday we need to take our bed apart and we need to move my dressing table out of the bedroom because we're having built-in wardrobes built in our bedroom. So we need to clear it out and we'll sleep in the spare room for um, a couple of nights or however long it takes. Then I can go through my wardrobe, get rid of anything that I don't wear slash doesn't fit me. That would be a depressing time. <laughs> I've got some very nice clothes that have not fit me in a long time. Sad. Um, yeah, and clear through all that and move everything to the wardrobes and then, yeah, get started on um, a new wardrobe for me, maybe. But actually buying clothes that fit me. Anyway, I'm just blabbering now about nothing. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me, subscribe. That would be lovely if you wanted to. I'm going to try and get back to posting every week. Once I've made a bit more progress on some of the projects that I'm working on, I will start to podcast again. I haven't really seen the point in podcasting because I haven't knit much. So, in December I wasn't really in a knitting mood, I'd kind of lost my crafting mojo quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, that is why I've not done a podcast in a while, but maybe I can bring them back. Um, but yes, also I have a Patreon if you would like to support me over there, that would be lovely, but no pressure if you don't. I post a bonus video there every week, uh, I do polls over there occasionally, you get sneak peeks, you get a discount code. You'll get a 24 hour head start on buying your advent calendars and stuff like that. So if that is something that you're interested in, link is in the description box below, along with all my social media links and where I post on socials. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you've been up to. I've missed you all so much. It'd be nice to reconnect again. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for being amazing. Keep being amazing. I'm going to go. I'm going to keep knitting on my sleeve. I'm going to attempt. I'm going to finish the repeat I'm currently on. I don't have, I think I've got like a quarter of an hour left on that. And then maybe one or two more repeats. We shall see. How I'm doing it is I'm watching something on my phone. <laughs> so silly. I'm watching, so because I don't I haven't printed out the pattern. So I'm watching something on my phone and then I like split the screen in half. So I've got the chart on the bottom and then the video on the top and so I can have both going. I can see the chart at all times. I'd have to stop and like switch, get the, unlock my phone. There we go, that's the word. So yes, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for being here. And I will see you very soon in my next video, hopefully next week. I'm getting back into the swing of things. So yes, bye.